Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon rides into Tuckahoe, New York, and finds a handyman <gasps> with a dream that's become a nightmare. It's the last fucking table! But that doesn't mean the owner is lacking confidence. I don't believe there's a better operator or restaurateur than me. Read the fucking ticket! The rather odd menu has turned customers on. I could come out of a baby's diaper. Right, that sits on top. The chef has lost his way. Do I still have passion for food? Please help me! No. And if Gordon can't get through to this control freak owner... You're a fake. Well, you're a fake. This restaurant will have no choice but to close. For every shit plate of food we send, we're narrowing the chances of this place becoming successful. Can Gordon restore order to the old stone mill? I'm not too sure if you're actually hungry for the change. You know that. Or have they grown accustomed to chaos? Are we scared about being busy? Yes. What? Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares. Tuckahoe, New York, a wealthy old commuter town 45 minutes north of Manhattan and home to the Old Stone Mill restaurant and bar. But now the Old Stone Mill is in danger of grinding to a halt for good. Okay, six years ago I, I took this place and I began my quest to convert this old mill into a restaurant. And here we are, open four years now. Dan, we took a risk. There's no investors here. You know, we built it out. I did everything in here myself. Is this the right spot? All the woodwork, the carpentry, the plumbing. The only thing I really didn't get involved in was the electrical work. <laughs> OK. I don't believe there's a better operator or restaurateur than me. But no one's coming in or trying to come in. I'm embarrassed that I can't go out with the sides that I need for a table. My boss, Dean, he's a pain in the ass. He has come in and screamed at me. Come on, man, read the fucking tickets. It's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. What the fuck? Do I still have passion for food? No. And it shows. There were days I just couldn't think of eating the food. I eat my food, and my family eats my food. And I think it's good. We don't have a very young crowd. There is a assisted living facility right behind us. And we do have a lot of the blue heads come in. <laughs> that's that's the that's the customer base. Hopefully the entrees will come soon. Service, please. We do have a problem with the service because it is very hard to get people to work here. Can I get someone here to clean the sink? I'm missing a dish here, I'm missing a knife, a little piece of glass on the table. Never hurt anyone, right? I have a reoccurring nightmare that I've had from day one. What happens if I open up, staffed up, food ready, and no one decides to come here. Well, it happened this year. I don't know. I don't have answers for that. I wish I did. When you're making no money, it's very hard to convince you that tomorrow is going to be a better day when you have bills to pay. It's not that nice when it's slow. Well, the slow night is a lot of sad faces. You tell me what to do. Well, he's Tell me right. what to do. Let everybody earn money and let Dean take it in the ass, as always. Why aren't more people coming here? I don't know. I really, really don't know. Being behind on my mortgage and the thought of them foreclosing on my house, I just couldn't, I couldn't take it. I can't take it. Hi, honey. Hi, babe. I need money for dry cleaning. Money? What about these people? Think they need money? <laughs> I think my wife might know. It, these last couple of months have been the worst ever for me. I'm going to be up here and see who the lucky people are that are going to get paid today. This restaurant isn't just a restaurant. It's our life, it's our future, it's our children's future. and himself could be here any minute. I almost drove by this place. What a beautiful building. What scares me is why no one's eating here. I'm about to find out. What the... 
Gordon. How are you? I'm Dean Lorenzo. Nice to see you. Well. Very nice to see you. Good to see you, too. Thanks for coming by. No matter what you say, the guy's a winner. His Michelin stars are like World Series rings. He's got them. Tom? Hi. Tom, how are you? What is that? This is the, the barman, yes? This is the chief cook and bottle washer here. This OK, guy. fantastic. You know, I know his credentials. I know how good he is. I'm starving. Oh, OK. I do believe Gordon could help the restaurant, but how much so, I don't know. Jeannie, this is Gordon Ramsay. When he approached me and put out his hand, said hello to me, well, first of all, I like blonde men, so he was adorable. Gene, nice to see you. I felt a very warm feeling. So glamorous. Gordon will be a plus in my life. This is our menu. It just has a little history on one side and our menu on the other. Thank you. You got it. Mm. How you doing? So I'd like to know the crab cakes are homemade with fresh crab meat. Fresh crab meat. Lovely. I'll start off with crab cake. I'd like to see a um, shrimp, please. I'll have the chopped salad, please, thank you. And then for um, main course, risotto. And then I'll go for the tilapia on papillot. Michael, you do things your way. I am very nervous. He's going to come in here, I'm going to cook for him, and he's going to say, eh. Are you um, chewing gum? Yes, you are. Is that normal? I suppose. Ready? Apart from being slow, the waiters think it's normal to chew gum. Hey. Come on, let's go. Send it out. We have somebody of his caliber come in. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know what he's going to say. Cool. Thank you. Mm. It tastes really strange. I can't put my finger on it. Something really weird in there. It's like a sour mayonnaise flavor. I'm hoping that he likes one of the dishes that he ordered, two of the dishes, maybe all of the dishes. Not to hell. Cheese. Wrapped in feta paste, deep fat fried. I've eaten some prawns in my life, but fuck me, that's a first. Not to hell. Make it out, Gordon. Is this a popular dish on the menu? Yes. Wow. So far, I don't think he's like the food. What is that? Chop salad. Oh, chop salad, sorry, excuse me. Look at that. What's that squashed into? Looks like it's been squashed into an ice cream cone. OK, that's it there. <laughs> right, that sits on top. Was the chef a mechanic? No. No. Aside from its appearance, it, people actually enjoy it. You know, this is my house. He was in my house, and he was embarrassing me. OK. Please don't make me eat any more of this shit. Take this out while this is still puffy, please. Lovely. Thank you. Looks like someone's had a shit in the bag and stuck it in the oven. Oh, dear. Disappointment was written all over his face. He doesn't like any of the food so far. It's gross. Pretty gross. Basically told me everything was serving his shit. What'd you expect him to say? Everything was great? Every single dish he had sucked? You know, I, I can't help but get defensive. Risotto. The chef likes all these little mashed lamb lettuce. Sadly, it's hot and disgusting. The rice just purees in your mouth. It, like, sort of sticks to the roof of your mouth. Mm. Well, a restaurant can't even cook a simple mushroom risotto. It's a big worry. Gordon didn't like the food. Didn't seem to like anything, so nobody's feeling too good right now. If you're going to be a restaurateur, at least know what your food tastes like. I don't think this guy's got a fucking clue what his food tastes like. OK. Take a seat. Sure. Sit down. Right, um, that was interesting. Um, interesting, but bitterly disappointing. Is that canned crab? That's not fresh crab meat, is it? It's canned crab. When I asked very politely, is the crab meat fresh, the waiter told me, yes, of course it is. The waiter told you that was fresh crab meat? Yeah, that's why I ordered it. First I'm one arrived sorry. stone cold. I'm sorry. Let's just have a little taste there and, and eat that for me. Look at it, it looked like it'd come out of a baby's diaper. Huh? No one's going to come back for that. That as a chopped salad. I mean, it's hideous. Let's have a taste of that. My eight-year-old daughter could cook better than that. 
probably from anyone else, I would have threw the table over and threw them out. Honestly, your food's crap. He's a little harsh, and he got to be a little abusive on the food. Oh, shit. What the hell did we get into? If you think that you're going to continue running this business, serving that shit, you may as well turn this place into a museum. No one's going to come back for this. I was pissed, real pissed. I wanted to take the plate and smash it on top of the chef's head. Coming up, Gordon bursts Dean's bubble. I'm not too sure if you're actually hungry for the change. And this owner boils over. What I get paid to do to stand here next to people and give them a good fucking experience. And later, Michael snaps. It's been an hour and I got nothing. This is the copy. You got to have the other half. This comes from the salad printer. That's coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. In order to fully understand all the issues of the Old Stone Mill, it's time to get tight-lipped Dean to open up. Um, these questions may not be comfortable, Dean, but unless I understand the full scenario, then I can't get this place back online. One thing I'd like to know is the financial situation. Are you aware of the current financial situation, Barbara? Um, he kind of keeps me in the dark a little bit. So. I don't want her to worry. No reason for her to share these anxiety and nerves that I have. Totally unnecessary. I try not to bring it up. It's always easier just to kind of not think about what's going on here. And that's probably one of the reasons why I don't come down very often to the restaurant, because what you don't know can't hurt you. I just choose not to deal with it right now. I'll let him deal with it. Yeah, but if the house gets taken away and you lose that, then you've got every reason to be worried. I mean, the bottom line is you're losing money. Correct. Every week. Every week? Yes. If we had to close yeah. tonight, just switch everything off. Yeah. What would we owe? Half a million. Half a million? Yeah. It wouldn't be good for our marriage, I don't think, if he would risk, you know, everything that we possibly had in the world. You got money tied up in the home, oh, mortgage-wise? Oh, sure. A mortgage, a second mortgage, and a home equity line. God, so that's backed up big time. Yeah. How do you manage in terms of getting through month to month in terms of mortgage payments, suppliers, salaries, your salary? What do you want me to say? It's, it's, it's you know, I'm in hell right now. Please don't get upset. I know, I won't. No, no, I won't. no, but I, no I it's, just... it's crucial for me to understand exactly where we are. No, I know. I've got to be really frank and honest. That's why you're here. Nothing is more telling to Gordon than observing a full dinner service. Fortunately, it's Saturday night, the one night the restaurant is busy. Hi, how are you? All right. Well, enjoy you your dinner. Much. Hi, folks, how are you? I know you'll be happy with that, and can't go wrong. Tonight, I am on the edge, because now the fear of failure is setting in. The cashew chicken. Prime rib, medium rare. Mushrooms As orders begin to arrive in the kitchen, Fried calamari, chopped salad, crab cakes, one prime rib, medium rare, two cashew chicken. Chef Michael is clearly frustrated. Have you see anybody run a line by themselves? Uh, not like this before, no. Huh? You know, it's just me, and you have to get it done, you get it done. It's not easy when you're by yourself. It really isn't. No, I'm not saying it is easy. No. Michael works more than is expected of a normal chef. He does above and beyond. As Chef Michael continues to fight the battles alone in the kitchen, Nice to meet you, Lisa. Owner Dean and manager Tom are in their own world in the front of the house. Just another day in paradise, huh? Hi, how are you? Perfect. I think I might have a beer with you. Oh, really? Cheers. Cheers. Say the truth. There is no place like this in Pennsylvania. There's no place uh, like home. Uh, as the manager here, I do whatever it takes to keep the place running as smoothly as possible. And where's your strengths? Your strengths in what? Hopefully the entrees will come right. soon. They should be. An hour into dinner service, and the overly embellished dishes finally emerge from the kitchen. Mike tries to presentate the food 
real nice. What's this crack here with calamari in the martini glass? Okay, we're just trying different presentation because the, the dishes we have suck. Suck? I can't believe you've been so fucking polite. Holy mackerel. I don't even know what to tell you. And neither Gordon or the customers are impressed. I think my piss is too much garlic. OK. Is it cold? Is there enough sauce on these cashew chickens? Yes, there is. I'll put more. When it just becomes a job, not that you don't care, not that you don't put any effort, but it's just the same shit every day. By the way, the, 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 the paper's edible. I've never had my dinner served to me in a brown paper bag. I don't know why the fries are looking remarkably shitty tonight. In your business right now, yeah. I wish that was the only problem, a fucking French fry. Is it cold? Send it back. Send it back, yeah. Excuse me. Are they OK? Yeah. Just OK? Just OK. Just OK. With food now being sent back to the kitchen, already behind, Michael is now totally overwhelmed. I need a risotto and a tilapia, and that's done. And Dean is not helping the problems, but adding to them. I got backed up because it was too much at once. Oh, my god. Overcooked. Come on, come on. Get this to, get this to 28, Boo, Boo right now. Mikey, the risotto. It's overcooked. God damn it. Got me very frustrated. Let the customer wait. If he waits 20 minutes and he's happy, or he waits 20 minutes and gets crap, what's worse? Let him wait 20 minutes and be happy. Give me that dish, man. Please send it out right now. Michael. Yes, sir. Are you happy with that risotto? Not really, chef, no. Michael, if you're not happy with it, why'd you serve it, my man? Chef to chef now. What? Forget, forget, forget Dean. Where's, where's the tilapia? That's huh? what I want right In now. In the oven. Yeah. Dean, he's the owner. Ultimately, it's his decision. Hey. Yeah. Right now, I just want to get people their food. You What's the matter with this? It's very salty. Mushroom risotto. Let me try some. Your risotto today is disgusting. Yeah, you should send it back. Does it make you feel better if we rush this to the table? No. I'm trying to ask the chef about some form of standard, and you're just like, get the fucking shit out of here. Because the lady asked me three times for yes. food. I'm amazed. You know that more than anything. I don't know. I don't know. What you, I don't know what you want me to say to you. Your restaurant is on the ass. That's what I'm. But it's done. About. It's done, Gordon. It's done. I love the facade you put across it. it you know it's that. It's not a facade. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yeah. Actually, we were just going to ask you about the risotto. Um, I think it's really salty. I don't really like the taste of it at all. Mm -hmm. Sorry, ma'am. Excuse me. OK, thank you. The risotto is really good. What did they say? It was a little salty. It's not a little salty. They sent back your favorite dish, the risotto. Dean's willingness to send out substandard risotto typifies what's wrong with the Old Stone Mill. In addition, a great deal of Dean's energy has gone into beautifying the restaurant. But the menu has been neglected. I don't think you understand the real reason why I'm here. The inconsistency of the food is obvious. The food needs some serious attention, and yet no one seems to address it. I asked Michael. Are you happy with the risotto? He said, no. And you said, no, I've got to serve it. I've got to serve it. They'll be waiting 50 minutes. Have you any idea how much damage you're causing? What do you want? What, what do you well, it's want? It's not about what I want. It's just what I'm, I'm miffed. I'm not too sure if you're actually hungry for the change. You know that? It's one thing to believe in a dream, but it's another thing to actually be in a dream world. For every plate of food we send, we're narrowing the chances of this place becoming successful. And I think you bully them into making sure that they get brainwashed to how you think. Well, let me tell you something. What you think is wrong. It's tough to get poked at all day. I feel like poking back right now. I'm trying to get through to you. So I can't get through to you, I've got no chance. I think you're treating this like a game. How dare you accuse me of not having a commitment? Dare you? I don't dare you. I'm telling you. You're not telling me anything. You, this is your own figment of your imagination that I don't have a commitment to this place. Dean's a fighter. He's not going to back down from a challenge. You just give me two minutes, you guys. Do you mind? You float on the customers coming round, blowing smoke up your ass. That's right, I do. When I ask people how their food is and they tell me it's good, it makes me feel good. I don't rubble around my customers kissing. How was it? 
Please tell me. You don't go to the table and ask people how their meal was? Or no, you, you probably pay 10 people no, to go to the no, table. No, I listen to the phone every morning to see how yeah. fucking fully booked I am. This is what to I get stand. paid to do. To stand in here. That's what, what I get paid to do, to, to stand, stand here next to people and give them a good fucking experience. And That's what I get paid and for. watch this shit come out. No. That's and your I don't feel good about it. No, I don't feel good there about it. There you go again. That's my opinion. I don't opinion. feel good about it. You fucking do. That's what I gotta do. That's what I do. You're a fake. Fuck you. You're a fake. You're a fucking fake. Is that how you're gonna act? Walk away? Can you not face it like a fucking man? It's what I gotta do. That's what I do. You're a fake. Well, fuck you. You're a fake. You're a fucking fake. Uh, you're full of shit. Is that how you're gonna act? Walk away? Can you not face it like a fucking man? I face everything like a man. I don't you shy do. away from nothing. That's right. Nothing. Nothing. Not you. Nothing. I have a commitment to this place that you'll probably never have to any place in your life, ever. What? Did I stutter? I just told you how I feel about this place. I'm not gonna suck your dick to make you believe me. If you don't believe me, you don't believe me. You don't like the truth, Dean. No, no I do like the truth. No one's burst your truth. fucking I bubble. Heard, I heard the truth in my life more than you'll ever hear the truth in your life. Bullshit. Yeah, that's what you think. You take pride in your hair, your trousers, your shirt, your, you, you're well-groomed. I just want you to take pride in what the fuck you do in a business. And if you applied what you applied in yourself each and every day, you won't be serving that shit. Right now, we've got some issues in here. And unless you're prepared to change, this place has got no chance. And you've had it all your own fucking way for such a long time. And it's not gonna continue being like that. One thing that has to change instantly, you. Ironically, it's Dean's fear of failure that is preventing him from making the necessary changes for success. But before Gordon can put his plan for change into action, he decides to explore the local competition. Italian, Chinese restaurant, next door to pizzeria, an American bistro. How weird, another Italian. Restaurants everywhere. Another Italian, my God. How are you? Very good. Good to see you. You too. And what a beautiful little shop. Thank you very much. Busy little place? Very busy. Fantastic. So the great meat eaters here? Yes, they are. They yeah. love their steaks, and they like them thick. Been up and down the street, there's not one steakhouse anywhere. No, there isn't. Why has no one ever opened one here? Ah, uh, I don't know. But if there was a steakhouse locally, you could supply it? It would be a pleasant change. Well, listen, thank you. OK, Good sir. to see you. Have a good weekend. OK. Chef. Thank you, Paul. Chef, thank you again. Take care. OK, sir. Nice. Now armed with local knowledge, Gordon knows that to turn this restaurant around, he must get the chef back on track. Michael, this restaurant needs to be known for something. First big change, prime rib. Prime rib. On the bone. Okay. This is a special to get this place in the right direction, okay. to make your life easier and to make service quicker. I am very nervous. It's not every day that you get to cook with a world-class chef. You know how to slice it from there, don't you? Down and all up. Yeah, exactly. Go ahead and put that beef in, yeah? I'm excited to learn those new dishes. And then after time, just put my own spin on them and hope he doesn't come back and throw me under the bus. The idea behind the chopped salad is having that little bit of crunch there, yeah? Romaine, shredded, a few chives, a little bit of bacon in there. Half dressed so it stays nice and crunchy. A little seasoning on the avocado, your tomato, chopped egg, a few chives. <laughs> Whee! Meltdown. OK. <laughs> yes? Oh, just think of the complaints. What? You're not stuffing my salad in a funnel? What do you mean you're not serving me a funnel salad? Mike, you all right with this? I'm like fine fucking... with that. I laughed my ass off. When he burned those funnels with the creme brulee torch, I laughed. I, and I understood his point. There's nothing wrong with a simple salad. Don't try and make it anything that it's not. If they come and ask me for their salad to be stuck inside a funnel, I will personally lift them and put them next door in the retirement home. <laughs> OK? <laughs> Last of the fucking funnel. With the chef re-energized, Gordon turns his attention to the owner and his team. Dean has always had the desire to succeed. Now Chef Ramsay is about to tell him how to do it. OK, I've done my homework. I've been out and about, and I fucking, I, I've studied hard. What isn't in the town? There's not one good steakhouse anywhere in this town. 
This place has got every chance of becoming a phenomenal steakhouse. Chef Gordon's idea of a steakhouse would really work here. He's 100% right that there is nothing else in the area. Give the locals what they want and get them come in time and time again and make money. I'm listening to Gordon. I'm listening to everything he said. And he's making all these changes. But when the changes are done, I don't know if he's going to get people through the door. This place oozes steakhouse. I cannot tell you. Look forward to it. How did you sit? I can't afford to make many changes because I can't afford to alienate or lose what I have right now. I'm fuming. Dean, give me a little bit of manhood. I'm not insane. I had a vision. You cooked a simple prime rib? That was your resurrection of the place, was a simple prime rib? Hey, I'm I've got 12 successful rations, highly profitable, and you, my man, missed out on a fucking trick. When you change concepts, when you change direction so radically, I think that's a sign of weakness. Tomorrow, we're changing the menu. We're going to relaunch the restaurant. You've got some serious thinking to do. Good night. It's day four, relaunch day, and time for Dean to embrace the changes that will hopefully save his restaurant. Gordon secretly has brought in his design team who worked through the night to spruce up the Old Stone Mill. You know when I first arrived here? Yeah. I drove by this beautiful building without actually realizing it was a restaurant. No sign. No. Nothing. Let's have a look, yes? Yeah, man. One, two, three, up. Look at it. Oh, beautiful. The natural stone, the Old Stone Mill okay, Steakhouse. That. Now we know what the place is when we drive by. When they unveiled the sign, it was just absolutely beautiful. I was breathtaking. Dean, do you like it? I love it. Huh? It's great. Very nice. Look next to it. Yeah. Steakhouse. Yeah. Why didn't I do it? Call the sign guy, work out a barter with him, do a trade, do something, and get the sign. I could have. I don't know why. Right, let's go inside. There's more. History. This is all the stuff that's been upstairs that you've been kept away. So when customers aren't waiting, you know, they can get a, an insight to what you've done. I want people to know from the first minute they walk in here that your heart is in here. I was a little intimidated when I first walked in because I didn't know what to expect. Every nook, every bloody piece of stone, look, the history's there. Gordon putting up these pictures of me building the place blew me away. OK, there's more. Come through. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, my God. Wow, now everybody can see everybody. Oh, it's lovely. It's just beautiful. I can't even put it into words. It's open. It's classic. We've got new plates, new linen, new tableware. Barbara, what do you think? Gorgeous. I got rid of the dark colors. Too depressing. Yes. Too depressing. The candles on all the tables, the fresh flowers. It's just bright. It's cheery. It's a place you want to be. I'm speechless. <laughs> I'm speechless. The same restaurant, the same people, but something is different. We have Gordon Ramsay's touch. Mm, smell. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if it works. It has to work. It's there now. There's no fucking excuse. We've got rid of the clutter. Look at it. Looks great. Huh? Looks great. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know any of this involved any kind of a makeover of any sort. But um, I'm man enough to admit that it's great. Even though the improvements to the decor are well received, that was an easy change to accept. Now for the hard one, the new steakhouse menu. OK, let's, uh, let's go through the food very, very quickly, yes? The menu. Let's start off with the um, meats. That's the porterhouse steak for two. You've got the most amazing ribeye. Next to that, you've got the New York strip, the most popular steak across America. I expected a blend of the old and new, but changing the menu completely surprised me the most. Halibut has a really nice sort of rustic, meaty flavor. Yeah, it's a very robust fish, but pan-seared is beautiful. And then the crispy skin salmon. Spaghetti or squash, confit shallot, and a really nice crispy skin, yes? OK, the appetizers. Um, steamed mussels, nice big bowl, and then the cream corn. Every steakhouse across the States has got cream corn on there. And then my favorite, the Old Stone Mill chopped salad. Sadly, no funnel. 
It's going to be a challenge, but uh, it's very exciting to have a new menu. With two hours to go before the doors open, Gordon wants to make sure the restaurant feels like the steakhouse in town. And before anyone eats any food, it will be up to the front of the house staff. This is now a steakhouse. We're going to confirm it. Each and every table arrives this evening. A quick presentation. Bingo. Tom, sell it to me. My worries are that the food's changed, the aesthetics have changed, but I still have my dysfunctional staff. Hello. Welcome to the Old Stone Mill Steakhouse. Here are the steaks we have this evening. This is our... our 21-day aged... <sighs> Fuck me. Let's go. We have a... I'm completely out of my comfort zone. You can't expect to win the gold medal in a week. And on the top, a Kobe strip. Oh, come on up. A Kobe strip. <laughs> Sounds like a fucking Japanese lap dancing bar. <laughs> it's still the same mediocre crew in there. God almighty! Gordon has introduced a lot of changes to the Old Stone Mill in just a few days. And with their heads still reeling, it's time for Dean and his staff to rise to the occasion. Hello, how are you? We're excited about tonight. We're hoping this goes over well for us. Can I take your talk? What do you think about the new look? Gorgeous. I love it. It's a new start. I'm exhausted. I'm emaciated. I'm tired. I'm anxious. <laughs> Are you nice tonight? Yeah? I'm sure hope so. Yeah, I was a little nervous going into it, not knowing a menu at all, only seeing it maybe at, at two hours before we were supposed to start. Not being ready is always a fear. OK, this is the big night. We put a plan together, and now they have to seriously execute it. Kobe beef medium rare. I, 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 I'm stuck. I would like to know where all the menus are. If people drop the ball tonight, you won't see them here tomorrow. Tonight is the night of the big relaunch. Gordon Ramsay's plan for a steakhouse to fill the void in this town has generated some buzz. Is that the mayor? And the restaurant is fully booked. Now it's up to Dean and his staff to start building a new reputation for the Old Stone Mill. Everybody is on their tippy toes. The mayor, now where does the big shot go? Tonight will certainly be an indication of the probability of success for this place. Hey. Hello. Hi. Mr. Hi. Mayor. It's a hey. Long time no see. I, I was a little intimidated when he first walked in because he's important to me to be here. Take your coat. Oh, thanks. When this place is full and the mayor's here, if you're not ready, um, I don't care how good you are. Come on. It's not going to work. With the customers and special guests taking their seats, the servers are busy making their rounds with the new menu. Have the Kobe. The Kobe beef. Medium well. <laughs> And it's obvious the pressure of the relaunch is already getting to Tom. New York strip. No, I'm sorry, the New York strip, the ribeye, and our Kobe beef special. <laughs> okay. It was crazy. I mean, this whole situation is crazy, and the whole night, obviously, from the beginning, was going to be crazy. Woo! <laughs> Get some napkins. <laughs> done. I'm fucking done. Tom. I'm not comfortable with the changes so quick when I don't know if we're ready for it. Yeah, Too much brother. for me right now. I just need. We I'm need you. Sorry, I'll be fine. We, I really will. We fucking need you. While Tom tries to pull himself together. Oh, you dry your eyes. I, I come back as the fucking manager, Tom. Okay. Okay. The first wave of orders hits the kitchen. Okay, Michael. Watch your temperature, yeah. I don't want the steaks coming back. Okay. Yes, chef. Good. Eight. Party of eight, who's eight? Whatever eight, eight comes in. There was plenty of pressure. A couple of times I lost my composure. Let's go. Let's go. Jeannie, they're customers, not cattle. And when Tom does return, he begins to feel the heat once again. What's that smell? It's hot as hell in here, isn't it? Yes. Well, it's hot in that kitchen. <laughs> I'm concerned about Tom. He's sweating like a pig. Gordon, I don't know what to say. I'll drive if you had too much. Don't you worry. Come on. I've got a problem. Quick, now. Right, you're running around like a fucking blue-ass fly. Yeah? You're fucking sweating like a pig. Get in the bathroom and do something about it. When Tom came back, you could see he was just totally disordered. Like, disranged. He, you know, he was nervous. He was nervous. 
God, it stinks. It's 45 minutes into dinner service, and though all appears to be going well, melts like butter, tastes delicious. Only a few customers have been served, and the mayor is not one of them. They've got a meltdown down there, and the uh, mayor, yeah, we can't keep him waiting. Yeah. yeah. Does Michael know that that's the mayor's table? What table number is that? Uh, uh, that's 12. Yeah. Just yeah. make sure he knows, do you understand? I need the mayor's table, man. I'm not getting tickets through this printer right now. Why? I don't know. This printer right here is not working? I am not getting tickets through this computer. It's going to fuck me up. No, the printer's working. Oh, boy. It was a disaster. I've already spoken to Dean about that. And I finally screamed, cursed, and yells, get someone in here to fix this now, or we're fucked. I can't believe that no one's coming in here to fix this fucking computer. But if nobody wants to hear it, nobody wants to hear it. How about those steaks? <laughs> How about those steaks? He's fucking standing there with his finger up his ass. I don't know if Dean understands. It'll sink the whole night. And you'll be done. Oh, God. Now we're seriously in the shit. All the orders are backed up, tables are waiting, Tom's switched off, but more importantly, we've kept the mayor waiting 45 minutes. Of all the people to keep waiting, not the fucking mayor. Christ. Now more than an hour and 15 minutes into service, and hungry customers are getting restless. So Okay, Michael, what I need is the fucking mayor now. Someone has to fix this computer, because I'm not getting tickets. Unbelievable. Get me fucking Dean, yeah, please. Straight away, yes? Dean, we have to go in the kitchen. I need the mayor's table, man. I don't know. It's a fucking hour. It's not easy getting kicked in the nuts every day and being told that you suck. I'm fucking embarrassed, man. Where? I told you this. I don't have tickets for this. Why aren't I getting tickets for this? Please help me. I don't Rip have medium the rail. ticket is what I'm saying. But it fucking is. This is the copy. You got to have the other hand. This is not my ticket. This comes from the salad printer. It's been an hour, and I got nothing. Read the fucking ticket. Oh, fucking hell. Here we go. What the fuck? Read the ticket. It's the last fucking table. I need the mayor's table, man. This is not my ticket. This comes from the salad printer. It's been an hour, and I got nothing. Read the fucking ticket! Oh, fucking hell, here we go. What the fuck? Read the ticket! It's the last fucking table! Prime oh, for the love of fucking Christ. Jeannie, two seconds. Yeah, don't worry about the fucking coffee. Mike. Mike, just come around for two seconds, please, yes? With dinner service on the brink of disaster, Gordon lays it on the line for Dean and his staff. Let's regroup a little bit, yeah? Let me just tell you the situation. Service is gone. We're all over the place. Let's get this thing back online. We've got to make decisions, especially at this critical moment. All right. This is where I need you now to fight back. This is going to make or break this place. I was really, really pissed off. But right now, for the sake of the success here, I have to just get through it. Let's get some appetizers. I'll pump those out real fast, and then we'll get you in there for your entrees. You know what? I will be right back, and I will wrap those up for you. You know, at this point now, let's work together. Let's correct it. Let's try to correct it. Sorry for the delay. Give me a steak knife, please. The printer's working. Good deal. That's good, Nana. Good deal. Two medium rare. Two medium. <laughs> Give me that, it's 34. Well, bon appetit. I certainly hope it was worth the wait. Excellent. And thankfully, Dean gets everyone focused. There you go. Thank you. And the night at least finishes successfully. The next day, Gordon wants to make sure that Dean's fear of failure would no longer stand in the way of his potential success. What really pisses you off the most? What is it? I know this place is, could be a raving success, and I'm not being blind, and I'm not in the fucking dream world. The fascinating thing about you, Dean, is that you're, you're scared of failure. Walk a mile in my shoes, and then we'll talk. 
I've failed before in business. When? When I opened a restaurant up in my hometown thinking I was the dog's bollocks. And it made me the person I am today, having both success and failure. Don't be scared. You can't keep on sidestepping problems. But I really believe that he's doing it for my career now. I really believe him. Perhaps deep down I knew that I needed to change and I can't overlook things anymore. You can't tiptoe over it. This is your business. You're right. I got to implement changes to make this work this time. I can't wait any longer. With a fresh, new, open-minded attitude, Dean masterfully took control of the front of the house and the back of the house. That prime rib looks to die for right there. This is the steak for real steak eaters. Tom started to gain the confidence he needs in his role as manager. Did they get you drinks yet? You yeah, yeah. yes. You good? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And Michael has rekindled his passion for cooking. Showtime, ladies. And to honor the Old Stone Mill's 200th birthday, Gordon organized a celebration party for the community. And for you, we'd like you to hang this also, the wow. key to the city wow. of Yonkers. Wow. Getting the key to the city blew me away. I'm excited for my husband because I see the smile back in his face. It's a push Gordon. <laughs> the local news even took notice, putting the restaurant back in the spotlight. Come and enjoy a steak at the Old Stone Mill. And the new steakhouse menu was just what this community needed and wanted. This is very nice. It's fantastic. It was excellent. Finally, the food is now as stunning as the building that it's cooked in. The most important thing is the confirmation that it can work. The potential is staggering. Now that you know what to do, don't stop doing it. Thank you. Sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, Thank, you, sure. sure. Thank you, my darling. Yes. Pleasure. Thank you. In my heart, we're going to make it. We have to make it. Up high, down below, you're too slow. Now get to bed. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay, he's such a blessing to our family that we could never, ever thank him enough for all that he's done for us. I arrived. I found the place, finally. I thought it was beautiful. Now, I think you've got something fucking phenomenal on. Now I have something to really be proud of. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Good luck. Thanks, man. I'm excited. I'm excited about what the future holds here. Yeah, do me a favor. Snip outside and have a quick look at the front of the restaurant. Oh, shit. <laughs> How do they do it? Where is it shooting from? Wow. I've wanted to sign up there for forever. I'm just overwhelmed tonight. That is so cool. Next time, Gordon takes on his biggest challenge yet in the Big Apple. It's rotten, my man. With a mixed up menu. The only thing that's not on here is Chinese. Too many managers and a host of uninvited guests. Holy shit. This restaurant should be condemned. Green burgers kill people. To turn this place around, Gordon will need a miracle. This is the luckiest day of their fucking life. Has Chef Ramsay finally met his match? Can you go and tell them that the kitchen is closed? Next time on Kitchen Nightmares.